It's going. So okay, let's do heart blocks. All right. When you're doing, let's read this. We want to make sure we're looking at the important things here. Heart blocks are an impairment in the conduction of impulses from the atria to the ventricles. So what's happening is from that atrial area down to the ventricles, something has blocked it right there between like either the AV node block or some type of uh, bundle of his somewhere in that area. And it says conduction may be slowed, intermittent blockage of impulses, or you might have a complete blockage, right? That's This is kind of why they call them AV blocks. AV blocks are classified based on the degree or the type of block and the location of the block. The P waves and the PR interval are the keys. Now remember this, okay, because you're going to get confused, but we're going to, when we look at heart blocks, we're going to look at the P wave and the PR interval, okay? And it says the key to differentiating the degree of a block. The QRS complex and the ventricular rate are keys to differentiating the location. So when you look at the QRS, I always heard the wider the QRS, the deeper in the heart, the block, okay? So, oh, and it says it there, the wider the QRS, the lower the location of a block and the slower the rate. The clinical significance of AV block depends on the type of block, the ventricular rate, and the patient's response. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to look at the same thing we always do, assess the rhythm, but we're definitely going to examine the P waves and the PR interval, right? We also might look at the, if you're really, I don't know that this will apply to you on your test, but you're going to look at the width of the QRS because the QRS is um, determines where, like if you were actually doing this for telemetry, you would look and see how wide the QRS because it's telling us how deep in the heart. So causes of AB blocks, let's go down here. What could cause it? What does it say? Okay, like coronary artery disease, maybe inflammation, infection. Uh, enhanced vagal tone, maybe something's wrong with our vagal nerve, and then cardiac drugs can decrease the thing and cause a block, right? So these are the four that you have to know. First degree, second degree type one, second degree type two, and third degree. So there's not a whole lot that you have to remember, but it does get a little bit tricky. So if you're looking at a first degree, gosh, doesn't that look kind of like normal sinus rhythm right here? It, it kind of does. But if you really pay attention, it says the sinus impulse is normally conducted to the AV node where it is delayed longer than usual before being conducted to the ventricles. This causes a prolonged PR interval. So a first degree, do you see how the PR interval is just a little bit longer? Um, so when you get on this test, it looks like normal sinus rhythm, but you really have to look at the, the length of the PR interval. And what could cause that to happen? I really don't think this requires any medicine. It just says causes a first degree block would be what? Look at some of the drugs that you're giving, like DIG, beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, even amiodarone, slow the rhythm of the heart. And then hyperkalemia, uh, rheumatic fever. Look at all the, the different ones here. I think I would know, has she asked you before what causes, what causes the rhythm? No, not really. All right. It really doesn't go over this. It's like us having to go. You are having to go over your own soft chart. Mm -hmm. So look, I was going to say this really doesn't need any treatment because there is a P, there's a P wave and a PR interval and a QRS. And there's really like still having blood flow. It just takes longer for it to happen. Mm -hmm. So if we look here, you'll see the PR intervals just a little bit lengthened. And it's like, what's the normal PR interval? What's normal? And at 12 to 20, yeah. like 0.12 to 20. And this is 0 0.28. So just a tiny bit longer. It's almost like you have to be really good at reading these to, to see it. So this one, when you're looking at second degree, I want you to think longer, longer draw. Now you have a winky ball. Okay. So what you're going to see is the PR interval is going to go longer, longer, and then it's going to drop off. So let's look at this. A second degree type one is characterized by failure of some of the sinus impulses to be conducted to the ventricles. In this rhythm, the sinus impulse is normally conducted to the AV node, but each successive impulse has more and more difficulty passing through the AV node. And then finally an impulse doesn't pass, 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So what it says is the EKG shows P waves that occur at regular intervals across the rhythm strip and PR intervals that progressively lengthen. So let's look at this. Do you see how it's a little bit long here? Probably normal than a longer than a normal one. And then it gets longer and then it drops, it drops off a beat. Mm -hmm. Okay. So be aware when you're looking, doesn't that look kind of funny? It looks like something's missing. I don't think a winky bock is very hard to see because you're like, oh, it looks like something's missing there. Mm -hmm. And so the PR interval, every time it, it beats, it has a harder time producing a ventricle contraction. The QRS complex is a missed beat and makes the ventricular rate irregular. After each drop beat, the cycle repeats itself. Isn't that weird? Hmm. Okay, so let's see what what could cause the, us to drop a beat. Pretty much the same things, right? Mm -hmm. So if you know what can cause it, and look at this as normal variant in an athlete at rest. Hmm. Hmm. That's weird. Yeah. So what are we going to do, do to treat it? This is assess for signs and symptoms. Usually no treatment. Huh. So... There you go. You, that's pretty easy, right? So what what are you going to do if you get on your test to to see this? So you're going to see this strip, let's pretend, and and you're going to say, how are you going to know that's a winky walk? Yeah, this one's not hard. So really the PR interval is what's going to tell us about it. And if you know that, it makes it super easy. Now here, if you saw a strip like this, you might go, okay, that's pretty long. That got longer and then it dropped off. So you might not see two in a row, right? But if you measure them, look, it's going to go from 0 0.24 to 0 0.48. So does this one have the same, does it say up there that it's just longer than like? So zero? I'm going to tell you, no, it doesn't say that. But what I'm going to tell you is anything that's longer than 0 0.20 is long. It's a longer PR interval. And it doesn't have to be like excessively long, but this is 0 0.28. So they know that's that's pretty long. And you can see here, the QRSs are about the normal width. That's, we're not having any trouble with that. And let's look at second degree, okay? So this one is just a little bit different. And it says a second degree type two is characterized by failure of some sinus impulses to be conducted to the ventricles. There is more than one P wave before each QRS with only one impulse being conducted to the ventricles. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. So it's like the atria is like beat, beat, but only one of those beats goes to the ventricles and causes the ventricle to fire. The P waves are identical and occur regularly the PR interval of the conducted beat may be normal or prolonged and remain consistent. So let's look down here. If you were to measure from here to here, from here to here, you see how it's consistently firing? But what you see is you're, you may mistake this for a T wave, but this is actually a P wave. And then there was no contraction. But it doesn't look funny because it looks like all the QRSs are happening. So what you really need to do is like measure from here to here and here to here. And there should have been one here, right? Um, as a result, the QRS complex may be narrow or wide. Second degree type two is more serious than type one. So, so far a winky bock, we don't treat type one. We don't treat, um, but this one we're probably going to treat. And so it says it can suddenly progress to a third degree block. So a second degree can progress to a third degree. The hemodynamic effect is related to the rate caused by the non-conducted beat. The greater the number of non-conducted beats, the slower the heart rate. So if we were to look at this heart rate, we would just go, wow, one, two, three, four. That's 40. Slow. It's pretty slow. Um, what could cause it? Hmm. And in my age-related degeneration, uh, is there, it doesn't say, oh, here's the treatment. What are we going to do for it? I think this person's going to need a pacemaker, don't you? So temporary pacing, uh, it can be transcutaneous or transverse or epicardial either way. And then dopamine to make the heart work harder. And then epinephrine probably going to speed it up and then they might need a permanent pacemaker so type two 
key pacemaker with that one and the medications. So how would you recognize the strip on the test? What would you, what are you looking for? I guess you look for a normal, like. Mm -hmm. It looks normal, normal to begin with. Sometimes a top two, I think it can have more than two beats. I think there can be like three. I don't want you to think it's only two P waves, but sometimes there can be three. And I think I think the next one will show us this. Okay. So look, we've got two P waves here. We don't have a B. We have two. It looks just it just looks funny. I like how she gives you one that looks really obvious and then one that doesn't look super obvious. This is what makes it kind of hard when you're looking at the test. So let's look at third degree. Okay, so you have a third degree block. And what that means is this, there is no relationship. Like the atria are doing their own thing and the ventricles are doing their own thing. Nobody is talking to anyone. So what it says here is no relationship between atrial activity and ventricular activity. So what you're gonna see, and this is where you've got to count is the P waves march out consistently and sometimes they're inside of the T wave. So this is a P wave, and then you would see a P wave here, and then a P wave here, and then probably right here and here. So the atria, it's marching, and then the ventricle is not marching to the same beat. It is marching, it, it's, it's just not firing at the same time. Like this PR interval is long, but this one's longer. And then that one's longer, so don't get confused. That is not longer, longer draw. Um, the atria continue to be paced by the SA node. So what's happening is the top part of the heart is continuing to make the atria fire, whereas the ventricles are paced by an escape pacemaker located at the AV junction at a rate of 40 to 60, or in the ventricles at a rate of 30 to 40. So this is gonna be a slow rhythm right here. The P waves appear at one rate and the QRS complexes at a slower rate, resulting in P waves that march through the QRS complex. Third degree block is serious and potentially life-threatening and it can progress to ventricular standstill. So this block, now I just want you to see, like it says the hemodynamic effects is dependent on the ventricle. So if the ventricle is really slow, it's going to not put blood around the body. So depending on how, how much the ventricle is putting out. So if we look, I think we saw, I don't know if you noticed or not, but most all the blocks have hyperkalemia. Um, and then look what we're going to do. Pace, dopamine, and epinephrine. We're going to do a lot of dopamine and epinephrine with top two and then a top two. A block and then this one so how do you what are you going to do to recognize this this is going to be a tough one i think i remember seeing this and thinking this is a tough one to try to decide what's happening so you really want to run through them in your mind and go okay this it looks like it's two p waves but sometimes what you'll think is you'll think oh there's a p wave and then it dropped one and there's a p wave hmm so pay attention, like really count through your strip and uh, pay attention. All right. So you can see the P waves just marching through. They're beating their own rhythm. This one's a really good one to see. Okay. So let's look here. Let's make sure we know. All right. So first degree, the PR is consistent, but it's just a little bit longer, right? So we don't do anything for it. It's just the PR interval is a little prolonged. Second degree type one, what, what is that one? How do you remember that one? Longer, longer drop, okay? Now you have a winky bock. A winky bock is a type one. And we're not gonna treat this one either. That's still okay. Second degree type two is what? What would you see with that one? Do you see here it says two or? Oh, three waves or more. I don't know. Well, I remember I remember on something, I saw like four P waves and I was like, well, that can't be a top two because there's four and she only showed two, but but it could. So remember uh, regular atrial rhythm. What would we treat top two with? Pace. Pace it? 
dopamine, dopamine or epi, yeah. right? And that's what we're going to treat this one too. So, but what happens in the third degree block? What are you seeing? There's no relation to either thing. There's no relation. Exactly, exactly. So if you can get this, this will be really, really good. I'm glad to go over it. A pacemaker. So, you, okay. Can you have two pacemakers? Mm -hmm. Okay. Where do they place the pacemakers? Where are they placed inside of the heart? Okay, that yeah, so the SA node and the AV node, they can do temporary pacing. So transcutaneous would be like external pads on the chest wall, and then the electricity passes through them. They can do what's called transvenous, uh, where you know you put the little electrode underneath the skin. They can do epicardial, which means after after cabbage, the patient will come out of surgery with the two mm -hmm. pacer leads. And then they can do, so make sure you know, we can pace the atria, we can pace the ventricle, we can do dual pacing, and we can do biventricular pacing. Um, it, it shows us a little line before the P wave or before the QRS. So here, what kind of pacemaker do we have? An atrial pacer. What kind of pacemaker do we have here? Uh -huh. And then what do we have here? One of each. Very good. So this gets a tiny bit confusing, but it says the stimulus of the pacemaker to the heart appears as a pacer spike on the EKG. Captured pacing is when the pacer provides a stimulus or a spike. So if it captures it, you're going to see the spike. Now, this is where it gets a little confusing. See how little that is? Boom, boom. You're like, is that a, what is that, right? Um, over here, what are we looking at? Where's the pacer? You see, right. this is it right here. It's long. There's the ventricle and there's the pacer, pacer, pacer. So it shows it as a longer one. And then here, what are we looking at? Mm. I think we're looking at two pacers here. Yeah, I think we're looking at a P wave and a QRS pacer. Do you see how the QRS got kind of wide down here? So let's look. Well, I think she's going to ask you, what would you teach your patient about pacemakers? Because you've got to know, what are you going to teach them? So teach the patient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't lift your arm above your head. Um, teach the patient family how to take their pulse and, and log it. Instruct the patient on low heart rate setting on the pacemaker. Call the healthcare provider for, yeah, infection is big. For pacer with leads, the arm on the implanted side may be immobilized, not permanently, but for till it sets. And then limited movement, don't raise the arm above the height of the shoulder. There was a, a, a question on you world that said something about the patient had just had a pacemaker and had to get something off the top shelf in their closet. And what would you do or say? Restrictions on movement is limited until the patient's seen by the physician. So Think they're going to ask you that so let's look and see if we can see here now this is this to me is where it gets tricky okay because if you have something failure to pace what does that mean well it says up there the pace pacer does not initiate an electrical impulse when it should so no spike on the ekg so this would be like we paced but it didn't do anything right? It failed to pace it. Now, failed to capture is an electrical impulse is generated by the pacemaker, but no depolarization occurs. I think this is failure to capture. I don't know. See, this is where I even get confused. So if you look, fail to pace, the pacer does not initiate an electrical impulse, which is really true here too. So they're both failed to pace and failed to capture. Or maybe the line. The, the line is the pacer, right? So would that be, that did pace, but it failed to capture. Yeah, I think so. There is a pacer spike without. So then that one would probably be failure to pace right there. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this one would be failure to capture. Uh, so like, oh, yeah, it didn't generate an electrical spike. impulse. So there's failure to pace and failure to capture. Now, this one is tricky because it says failure to sense. The pacemaker does not sense the patient's own rhythm and the pacer will fire somewhere where it's not supposed to fire. Hmm. Yeah, fired. Like, I don't even know where that is. 
And then did it do it again? No. Where about the B? Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah. So it did fire there. It just failed to fire here. Ooh. It did fire. So this you're really gonna have to just look at those pace, failure to pace, failure to sense. Maybe she has a better way in class for you to go over there. She didn't have so far, she, yeah. yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's look. We're gonna let, let me get out of this, and we'll go to where it's not in print mode like this. We'll go to oh, just a second. Let me go back up. Oh, I can't take it out of there. Can I go to? Um, let me stop this. We'll just stop recording. I'm gonna run to the doctor. Okay. Hopefully I can go back. Progress. Okay. Here we go. So identify the following rhythm. Now we saw this right. We saw the little pacer spikes right here. So we know it's pacing, but it didn't give us a beat. So what did we say that was? Uh, failure to capture. Yeah, so it failed to capture because it didn't send anything. It didn't cause the ventricle to, to capture or to pace. So I know it's weird, failure to pace, failure to capture. I remember what failure to capture is like failure. It, just think it, failure to capture a picture of it. Okay, um, this one, we can see this pacer, you can see that pacer right there. So we do see that something came after the pacer. So what would we say that's happening here? Or captured ventricular pacing. Yes, so captured ventricular pacing because we see it, it captured it, and that's the ventricle. Okay, very good. All right, what about this one? We've got, let's look at it. Here's your P, I'm gonna always start at my P wave. My P wave is next to my QRS. I'm gonna go over here and look. My P wave's next to my QRS, my P wave's next to it. So it can't be a third degree because I have a P wave before each QRS. The third degree, you won't have that. Then I'm gonna look and I'm gonna go, okay, one, two, three. Hmm, I think this is a second degree. Remember, mm -hmm. second degree type two, you can have two or three. Because your first, I'm trying to remember this in my head. The your first, you're going to see the da 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 drop. The second, you're just going to have a bunch of P waves. Third, you're not going to have the P, all the P waves. Mm -hmm. And first degree, you're just going to have that prolonged PR interval. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this has got right. to be this, right? It's not a third degree. So I ruled that out. Yes. Very good. Okay. So now what we've got here, let's look. First of all, on these blocks, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at my. P wave. Mm -hmm. There's Don't one. There's one. Wow, they're all kind of long. Yeah. And then I have a QRS and, and a little T wave. So what am I looking at? First degree. Sinus rhythm with a first degree. Very good. We're not going to do anything to treat that, right? There's no treatment for that. All right. So this word's getting a little confusing. I'm going to look. I have a P wave here. I don't really have one here. I'm not really sure if I have one here. Hmm. Okay. So I'm not sure if this is a third degree. I'm not, but then we've got one, two, three, four, and then there's one, two, three, four, which probably tells me something's not happening here. Hmm. All these look the same. There's not like one big P wave and then another different P wave and another different one, unless you're looking out here, then it looks different. What do you think that is? the same the second degree type two. I think it is a second degree top two because if you are looking at it remember you can have three or I mean two or more um and I don't I, I think all the QRSs look the same is what I'm looking when I look at the QRS I just look right before it I'm not looking way out here um when I see a bunch of them I know it is okay so now what do we got Hmm, look, I got a PR interval. That one's really close. That one doesn't have one. And this one doesn't have one. It's gotta be. It's gotta be. That's pretty obvious, I think, if this is correct. Okay, so third degree. Do you see how I did that? I just said, oh, there's no P wave right here at all. Um, Right here, what do we got? You've got your type one because you've got the drop. Okay, so we got second degree type one, mm -hmm. longer, longer drop. Now we got a winky buck. Okay. And then here, what do we got? 
What what are you let's look together? What are we looking at? The P waves. Okay, so let's look at this P wave. Ah, that's either longer or there's not one. But look, there is one here. When you look at them all and you see one this close and then you see that one this far away, I think that's gotta be a third degree. Mm -hmm. Because they're in different positions. This one's here. Even if this one was here, not it's not consistent. Yeah. That's what the problem is. Let's check and see. Yeah, that's a third degree. The more you do this, the better you're going to get at it. Okay, so. The second degree is not one. Yeah, those are pretty easy to see because you can definitely see where it okay. dropped it off. Yeah. Yeah. Just you got it going on all the way through except for right there. Good job. There you go. So hopefully that will help to some degree. Uh, let's just 